Hey traders, Raggy here, and in this recap video, we're going to talk about kind of just this theme that we've been putting to work throughout the week, and you know, it's something that if you haven't done any homework over the weekend, this might be something to think about. And how can you put something like this to work for yourself into the weekend? And that is, are you patient enough to wait for opportunities in terms of corrections when they happen on longer term time frames? And you know what I'm talking about is our our, pre our prevailing opinion that the pullbacks on the S and P, the Dow, the Nasdaq, the Russell are viable pullbacks. That there's ways to be able to take advantage of the weakness, and then wait for an exhaustive move. Now I've been talking about the price movement ranges, so you know the mechanics with which I do it. But let's talk a little bit about the longer term time frames because it doesn't have to be day trading, although that's one way. We can do it, of course, but it doesn't have to be day trading. And one of the things that I oftentimes feel that traders who don't like day trading uh, kind of feel pigeonholed into, well, I, do I have to do this in five and 15 and 30 minute time frames? And, and you know, my answer to that is no, not at all. Because oftentimes what you'll find is that the longer term time frames will pull back, but give you a trend following opportunity on a 240, a 480, and time frames that'll allow you to hold on to a trend for a whole lot longer. So let me show you a, a, a few of these examples. Like, for example, if you're looking at the NASDAQ, we've pulled back on the 240, we've pulled back on the 480. If you're looking at the Russell, you know, I think the Russell continues to be a daily time frame. The last trade that we took on the Russell was what we call a half back entry on the daily off the area between 1680 and 1676. So those kind of trades, they're not going to happen as frequently. We can continue to be opportunistic on the intraday clearing range pullback. And we, we walked through the mechanics of that earlier this week in, in previous recap videos. And, and that's how you pinpoint these entries. But these entries really are correction buys. I'm not looking at the shorts. So even though in a lot of ways you can see the market was fairly heavy, you know, in a lot of these scenarios, I'm not going to get caught in a short. And here's normally I won't get stuck in a short. And the reason for that is because if I'm looking for the pullback buy on a 240 minute or a 480 minute time frame, and I'm waiting for this area down in here, somewhere between the 21 EMA on the close and the 34 on the high, I'm either going to be sitting on the sidelines or I'll only be getting long at exhaustive support levels. So the, the biggest thing I think most traders in this environment have to be uh, okay with is being flat, not being short, and only being long from exhaustive levels, which means I think right now we really have to embrace, and this is kind of the message that I want to send out here going into the weekend, flat is a position. And ask any trader who's in a position they wish they never took. They would say, yeah, if I had to do it all over again, I would have been happy with being flat. We'll talk a lot more about these exhaustive moves. I'll be back in the chat room Monday morning and we'll be trading this live and uh, looking at the setups before the bell rings. So these are the kind of things I want you to think about. Are you looking at time frames that are long enough in nature to absorb some of this chop? And are you okay with flat being a position? I'll see you in the next update. Have a great weekend.